right, I've got mummies on the brain, guys. I've got Nazca mummies on the brain, and it's measurable by remote viewers. So let's talk about the Nazca mummies. There's a lot to talk about today, so get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Yeah, so Jaime Masson sat down with Dr. John McDowell, eminent uh, forensic scientist, uh, to uh, discuss uh, his research on the Nazca mummies. It's over a 20-minute interview. I'll let, I'll let you watch the full thing at your leisure. But this is a really interesting segment. Uh, they're talking about a research to come, what needs to be done, and the problems with bringing the mummies into the United States. So let's give a listen. Um you say that we have to continue. Where would you suggest that investigation should be done? Anywhere where adequate facilities, sophisticated facilities are available to do further analyses. Now, if they're available in Peru and they meet the forensic standards that uh, we as forensic scientists are used to, then it could be done in Peru or it could be done in Mexico or it could be done in the United States or some other uh, location that has the facilities and the personnel who have the technical ability to do the analyses. What if they cannot do it in Peru? Uh, then ideally, it, uh, if with the permission of the Peruvian government and the Ministry of Culture, then to have them taken outside the country of Peru. It means that the government, the Minister of Culture of Peru, have to allow this because if they don't allow this, there is no university institution yourself who would touch these creatures. That's correct, Jaime. Uh, we want to abide by all international laws. Uh, there are laws specific to this, and uh, perhaps my son Josh, as a lawyer, uh, can explain in more detail but we want to uh, respect not only the culture of Peru, but we also want to respect the laws of Peru. Now, the United States, uh, is my understanding, would not allow any materials of uh, ancient source to be brought into the United States without the permission and authorization of the source country. So there you go. There is the problem right there. Will we get authorization from the Ministry of Culture that has done its level best to uh, obfuscate and cover up and even uh, confiscate bodies? Will they allow uh, these bodies or some material from these bodies uh, to be delivered to the United States for further testing? And I think that we do need that, especially for the DNA. Um, so, uh, or, or some other, you know, a similar place where they have that level of technology. Will that happen? I sure hope so. I'm hoping the tide is turning, uh, that there's so much attention on the mummies now that they won't be able to, to stop the progress that, uh, you know, John McDowell, Dr. John McDowell and others are making. So fingers crossed for that. Uh, McDowell does say that there is a, there are specific laws for this. <laughs> I don't think there's specific laws for this. There is specific laws to protect cultural artifacts, but there are not specific laws to protect inhuman artifacts. Uh, yeah, unless you've got unless you're born with three fingers and three toes and uh, elongated skull and you're an egg laying being, uh, I don't think you're part of that culture. So I don't think any human laws apply, but that's just me. So fingers crossed for forward progress. Meanwhile, McDowell and the McDowell Law Firm, which was his son runs, has put out uh, this, uh, this article about their findings from the cave, relics in the cave. The story of the tridactyl mummies has all the ingredients of a pulpy page turner. Uh, the cast of characters is an unlikely international coalition of treasure hunters, profiteers, oligarchs, filmmakers, grave robbers, doctors, and journalists. All of them seem to have their pet theory about the origin and nature of the bodies, what they are, and how they ended up in a dusty cave, undisturbed for centuries. The article then goes on to talk about artifacts found in the cave. The man who claims to be the founder of the mummies, Mario, has stated he also found ritual dolls, many loose mummified hands and feet, carved stone figures, ceramic figurines, and small metal plates in the same cave. And you get these alien looking uh, sculptures here. Look at that. Elongated heads and everything. That is wild. 
And this one right here that looks an awful lot like the Virginia being, doesn't it? Uh, with the bumps on its head and everything. Fascinating. Fascinating. Among the carved stones, yeah, and look at that, look at that. They're, they're drawing the same comparison. Uh, among the carved stones, we find pyramids, elongated heads, and even a figure that bears a strikingly, stri striking resemblance to the depictions of the alien of Virginia with a crested head and tridactyl hand. The ceramics, also covered in diatomaceous earth, feature more representations that look like flying saucers, classic alien head depictions, more heads of the Virginia variety, and even what appears to be dinosaurs. During my interview with Mario, I showed him photos of the artifacts shown in this post. He confirmed that the photos are, as we say in the legal biz, a fair and accurate representation of what he found in the cave. It then goes on to talk about the collection of Dr. Javier Cabrera in the Scientific Museum, um, but since that's not directly related, uh, I'm going to move on. But it is worth noting that there are depictions of dinosaurs in that collection. Interesting. They talked to Mario, and Mario had some interesting things to say. First, where do the bodies keep coming from? If the cave has been empty for years, where have the mummy Montserrat and others been during this time? Secondly, he confirmed that there is another type of mummy that is very different from what has been previously examined and shown to the public. And I've seen a photo. Okay, all right. So they're, they're going to uh, keep us waiting for what Mario had to say, I guess. Uh, in other mummy news, my favorite uh, part of the journey into researching the Nazca mummies is the people I've met over the last few, last few months. Uh, it's, uh, the secret to the mummies is the friends we met along the way. Uh, so, yeah, but really interesting that they are finding these artifacts um, that uh, look like aliens, a pyramid, and even the Virginia being. And these are golden metal uh, relics found in the cave itself. So will we get any confirmation on any of the weirder, crazier stuff? You know, the big pyramid thing, uh, since there is a pyramid referenced here uh, with the alien writing on it or any of the other wild stuff, uh, some of which may even have been backed up uh, by the remote viewing done by Anita the other day. Uh, very intriguing, very puzzling. Don't know what to make of it all. Um, uh, I have heard uh, this lawyer, Josh McDowell, the son of Dr. John McDowell, say that Mario said that that crazy video of the uh, mantis fight in the cave was fake. I have not heard that explained at all, though. <laughs> There's a lot of sets and props that went into that. Um, if, if it was fake, uh, it, it was quite a, a labor-intensive uh, labor effort there for very little gain. Uh, it's hard to see how that video makes any sense. So I'm waiting. Uh, I, I've emailed Josh, um, and uh, but I have not heard back from him uh, with uh, uh, Mario's explanation for how that weird video came to be. But at the very least, we are getting what seems to be genuine artifacts from the cave where the Nazca beings were kept. Meanwhile, we have new CAT scans of the Nazca being Artemis. Uh, look at that. It's got uh, implants and everything. It's got eggs, uh, implants, just a great specimen. Uh, you know, it's kind of grisly to look at, but it is amazing, guys. It is amazing. Uh, you know, and there's the, the tridactyl, tridactyl feet. It's just an incredible specimen. Uh, I'm just so excited about the work that is being done, guys. This is UFO Disclosure. This is UFO Disclosure. We've got non-humans, guys. We've got non-human bodies of multiple varieties being found in Peru. Now, Anita, when she was making her connection with that one being, couldn't determine if it was from Earth or not. Uh, it appa apparently, it and its people had been here for a long time, and humans had even built over one of their structures. 
but whether they originally came here from here or not is an open question. I lean toward not because that is a massive gap in the fossil record. That is a huge gap in the fossil record and not just one record, but there's several different species. So that's uh, just a big, big bunch of gaps, guys. Big bunch of gaps. Meanwhile, Tridactyl says this, evidence of sodium and potassium found in the skulls of the Tridactyls is indicative of marine origins. That's very interesting, because Anita was saying they evolved from fish. These are some of the artifacts that were shown in the possibly more apocryphal video uh, that Mario says may have been hoaxed. Uh, very interesting, and they were doing studies on these things, including that thing right there, whatever the hell that is. Um, yeah, just a really interesting uh, uh, things, you know, props uh, they would have had to create for that fake video if it was fake. So what are these things and who made them uh, if they're fake? But apparently Mario himself has described some of the things those Tomb Raiders in that video were said to describe as well, including electromagnetic interference uh, and even possibly live beings in the tomb. So yeah, yeah, and you'll see here a depiction of that. Uh, they're peeking around the corner, looking at the tridactyl beings uh, moseying by. Uh, yeah, so there's there's some crazy stories out there. Are there living beings still in those tombs? As we've heard from Anita, the humans built over uh, existing non-human structures. So could below that tomb there be some sort of alien uh, dwelling or, you know, hive or, or something like that. There's a documentary by Joyce Mantia where he's exploring the region and talking about sculptures that resemble the tridactyls and also uh, what appears to be proto-Sumerian writing. Sumerian, as in Sumer, as in the Anunnaki. Uh, is there proto-Sumerian writing in Peru? Uh, in, in the Nazca region or in that uh, general region? Um, could that give credence to the idea that uh, the tridactyl beings are in some way related to the Anunnaki, which is what some think? Uh, the Anunnaki are not depicted as looking anything like the uh, Nazca beings or big bearded guys. Uh, so, uh, yeah, human looking. Uh, so what is up with that? What is what is going on with uh, the, uh, yeah, that's the Sumerian and that's what was found in Peru. Look at that. So what is going on there? What's going on there? You know, let's, let's see that side by side comparison again. So that's from Peru and it looks not exact. It, it is certainly not any sort of exact match, but you know, it is stylistically similar. So what do you guys think? Is there possibly some link between the Anunnaki or at least uh, ancient Sumer and the peoples or non-peoples of Peru? Some of you have asked for more details about Anita's remote viewing uh, from her notes. She has 13 pages of notes that she's going to put up on her own site. But some have asked me for more, uh, more details from, from that more in-depth uh, session. And uh, so, yeah, here's a little bit. Here's a little bit. Um, yeah, uh, a closed door, Inanna the goddess. A closed door that has been locked from the inside. No, no technology is here. It is an ancient site. A farmland with cows in a barn and fences. Alien being I saw two times very clearly. So it is either from the target or, or that it came to visit during my remote viewing, but I drew it in. The being shows me and tells me that it has three fingers on a hand. I talk with the alien being and it tells me that it needs flesh in order to live. It then shows me the corpse that I had earlier in the session, which I said was dark brown and had the yellow blue gear in the bandana with feathers. And the alien tells me that this is he. We are kings, the alien being tells me. I see the alien being again. A library of knowledge was lost about this thing, but it can be retrieved again. The knowledge to know about it. It was once a king. 
the alien was once a king. She goes on to talk about human sacrifice and how the gods need sacrifices, but it is unclear because she also describes one of the gods, and it doesn't seem anything like the alien being she's seeing. So uh, it's unclear if the tridactyls, if the aliens, the non-humans, have anything to do with the humans of the time. Uh, it's uh, yeah, I would love more information about what interactions they may or may not have had. But let me know what you guys think about all of that uh, in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media, Facebook and Twitter links below. Love to see you guys there. If you wanted to support Cosmic Road in an even bigger way, consider grabbing a coffee mug or a t-shirt in the merch store below. Or by becoming a channel member. Channel members are indeed rock stars. And I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you. Meanwhile, there's plenty of other videos on the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.